Hello guys, welcome back to another video on my channel. I hope you're all doing well. I've done a little bit of spring shopping lately in Vienna and of course I cannot withhold my findings from you so I'm going to share my latest pics with you today but first let me give you some impressions of our shopping days in Vienna. back in Vienna for a little shopping day because I actually got a message from my essay at MS that they have a pair of shipper sandals in my size which is actually not that easy to find because I have a quite small size and on the website you usually find those shoes only 39 or bigger so let's try them out and see if they fit. stop at the supermarket to get some oats because we ran out of them we would like to have them for breakfast tomorrow and tomorrow is Sunday so it will be closed. Long story short, look what I found. Crips with caviar taste. Never seen that before. We love like truffle ones. These are very good. center is changing a lot lately. There was a soft opening of the new Louis Vuitton store on this weekend when we were there and this new store is actually just a few meters away from the old address. Let me tell you that store is huge. On four floors you get to find everything that you could possibly wish for from Louis Vuitton. When you enter the store you'll find handbags, jewelry, accessories, perfumes, travel and home goods on the ground floor where you can even get your LV pieces customized with your initials and even hand painted by an artist. The staircase leading up to women's ready to wear and shoe heaven and further up to an own floor dedicated to special home objects that can only be entered in the company of an essay. 
is surrounded by artworks from Austrian artist Erwin Wurm. LV also recently launched the very first baby collection with the cutest pieces for the little ones. This new store is definitely worth a visit, so if you happen to be in Vienna, make sure to check it out. It's such a nice experience to dive into the world of Louis Vuitton a little bit deeper. Although we spent there almost two hours getting a tour through the entire Louis Vuitton store, I ended up leaving the boutique empty-handed. I tried on a pair of silk pajama pants with the LV monogram all over it and it did kind of like it, but ended up leaving without it as the fit was just not perfect. They were way too long, a little bit too tight on my thighs, but at the same time too wide on my hips. Sure, you can get that tailored and Louis Vuitton of course also offered me that service, but honestly when you get a pair of pants in such a price range, I think they should fit perfectly straight away without having the hassle to get them tailored specifically. I'm just tired of needing to get everything adjusted so that it fits, so I just stop buying things that I don't like immediately and where I need to put in extra effort to make them suit me. And the monogram is of course very prominent and loud. In the moment where I tried it on, I liked the look of it on me, but sometimes I have the feeling that you look like a walking advertisement for a brand if it includes that much logo. I could not think of too many occasions where I would actually wear that. As said, for daily life, this piece is a little bit too loud for me, so I will probably end up wearing it on very rare occasions only, for example on summery trips or at home. And honestly, for that it's probably not worth it, so I stayed away from it for now, but Let's see if it will stick to my mind for a little longer and if I might consider getting it still. All right, I have some more store updates for you. The Hermes Boutique is still fully under construction. It should have opened this spring, but I was told that it will most likely not open before fall this year. Until then, Hermes moved to a very small boutique, which does not have much stock, but I still got lucky this time and found something from my wish list. I will show you what's inside in a few minutes. The new boutique shall become the largest MS store in Europe, so I am very curious and looking much forward to the opening. I've also been told that they should get many bags for the opening, so of course my hopes are high to maybe finally get a hold of my very first MS bag this year, which would be an absolute dream. But let's not jinx it, let's stay patient and wait and see and wish. I also stopped by the Miu Miu store because I wanted to try on the ballet flats which they unfortunately did not have in the silk material that I wanted so I left the store empty-handed again but I got to chat to the essay a little bit and she told me some more about the future plans of Vienna's shopping district. She told me that Saint Laurent is planning to move to the current Salamander store and that Celine might take over the current YSL boutique then. This would be so nice to finally have an own Celine store in Vienna. It's one of my long-term favorite brands, so I hope that this is true and will turn into reality. What was already confirmed in the news is that Dior will move into the old address of Louis Vuitton and I've also heard that an own Dior cafe is in the planning, which I would absolutely adore. I've been to the Monsieur Dior cafe at Avenue Montaigne in Paris a few times and it is so dreamy. It would be absolutely amazing to have something like this in Vienna too, maybe very soon. Generally, it seems that they want to bring that Parisian boutique look and feel to Vienna, so I'm also much looking forward to this opening but most likely it will not happen anymore in this year, so we will have to wait until 2024. Now the question is, who will move into the new Dior then? Allegedly Fendi showed interest and might make a move to the opposite of the street to take over the Dior boutique. But then the next question arises of who will move into the old Fendi then? We'll for sure see, these are just rumors that I heard from several essays for now, but I will keep you updated as soon as I know more. And last but not least, Van Cleef will also open its doors in Vienna, I think the boutique should open someone in summer this year. So we see that there's obviously a lot going on in Vienna lately. I will for sure keep you updated and take you with me whenever there's something new to discover. All right, enough for the Vienna updates. Let me finally show you what I brought back home with me. First off, as already shown quickly, we have something from MS that was on my wish list for this year. Can you guess what it is? Let me take out the first box, but this one is actually not mine, it's a purchase from my boyfriend, but I will quickly show you what he got as well because it's too nice not to share and maybe some boys are watching my videos too. So let me open this up first. As you can see, it's a pair of shoes. A pair of summer shoes, that's what I can tell you already. So he got a pair of the Izmir sandals in black. 
Let me take out the paper to show you properly. This is how they look like. Super chic, super classic. I think they are so cool. I would also like to have a pair of those, but they are only available for men at the moment. And I have two small feet that I could shop in the men's section. So I have to admire them on my boyfriend for now, but I think this is a very nice choice and to suit him so well. All right, then let's continue with my purchase. This is the box and what I can tell you already is that it's also a pair of shoes, my second pair of MS shoes and it is again a pair of sandals. So if you've watched my wishlist video you will probably know at this moment which pair I chose. Let me take them out and it is... pair of shipper sandals oh my god guys let me tell you i was looking for this pair for such a long time they have them online but always only in big sizes i think in 39 up i've been trying to find those shoes in every ms boutique that i've been i've asked in paris for them for several times but they never had them in a smaller size for me so i am so happy that i finally found them and i totally did not expect to find them in the small alternative boutique in Vienna. Actually, I was on the wish list for them, so my SA called me and told me that they are back in stock. So of course, I did not hesitate for a minute and <laughs> basically ran to the store to pick them up. I think they just gave me like three or five days to get them. I did not think twice. I went to the store, I tried them on. I hoped that the size would be the right one because I've never tried them on before and they actually fit perfectly. I'm so, so happy with this find. This is the full pair. They actually also had them in the black and white version, which I initially thought would be my preferred version because I think they look a little bit more interesting than the all black ones. And as I already have a black pair of orange sandals, I wanted to get something different and I was tending to get the white ones. But when I tried them on, I actually did not like the white ones on me at all. I don't know why, they just had somehow a little bit of a clinical touch and neither the essay nor my boyfriend really liked them on me so i listened to their opinion and went again for the all black pair i mean i think all black is such a classic you can basically never go wrong with that choice so I changed my mind and decided against the white ones and went for the black ones. I have to say that just by looking at the shoe itself, I still do prefer the white ones, but as said before, they just looked weird on me for some reason. I think they just did not fit my pale skin tone as well. So these ones were definitely the right choice and I can't wait to wear them out in spring and summer season. I've also seen a black, white and neutral combo ones, which would have been an absolute dream. I think this would be the most perfect pair for me, but they are impossible to find in Europe. So I gave up on that and I'm just super happy that I at least finally found this all black pair, which I absolutely love. And I think I was looking for them for over a year now. So yeah, the hunt is over and I'm finally owner of a pair of Chypre sandals. I really like the chunky style of them. They are more casual than the Oran, so now I have two great options, one for more relaxed fits and one for more chic looks. I still need to wear them out to see if they're comfortable, but just from trying them on, I feel like they're a bit more comfortable than the Orans as the sole is a bit more soft and bouncy. Let's move on to the next find, which is something from Chanel. I would have never thought that I would find this piece in Austria as it is super popular and I was 100% sure that it will be sold out in the minute that it will come into the boutiques but apparently I was lucky to find it and I've checked the website from Chanel and apparently it's still online so if you like this piece it is still available. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. By the shopping bag you can probably tell that this is not from the fashion boutique but from the beauty one. I actually asked for this piece in the fashion store first, but they did not have it. So they told me that I could try at the beauty boutique, uh, which I did. And obviously I got lucky. So the beauty boutique is also selling accessories. And I will not tell you more than that. Now, let me just show you what I got. So here's the box. Let me uh, remove the camellia, almost destroyed it already. Let's see what's inside. Maybe you can already tell what it is now by the case. It is a pair of 
sunglasses. And it's actually my very first pair of Chanel sunglasses. I do not own a single one yet besides this one because I'm not the biggest fan of Chanel sunglasses to be honest because I never liked the shape of them. They're always very big, either round or a little bit more square shaped, which does not really fit my face. But when I saw these ones here, I knew that they were made for me. They are just perfection. They look a little bit similar to my favorite Dior sunnies that I have, the Wild Dior ones, with this rectangular shape. And I think this is something that fits my face very well. So I did not have to think twice and knew that if I want to have a pair of Chanel sunglasses, this will be it. So let me put them on to show you how they look on me. What do you say, guys? I think they are a little big, but I kind of like the vibe and I think they are just so modern for Chanel. They are very untypical in terms of the shape, as said before. I just really like them. I think they're so, so cool. On the side here, they have a little golden Chanel logo and that's about it. Also on the glass here, there's Chanel engraved, but very, very tiny, so it's almost not noticeable. Such a minimalistic and classic pair of sunglasses. I am absolutely in love with this pair. Could not think of any more perfect pair of Chanel sunglasses, to be honest. And let me tell you guys, this pair was super expensive. Um, there is a reason why. You see that on the side here, there are two little holes and as you might have already seen in the box, these sunglasses come with a pearl chain. Let me take that out. So this is it. This is the pearl chain that I'm talking about. And this obviously doubles the price of the sunglasses. It's a little bit ridiculous if you ask me, but it is what it is and you can't purchase the sunglasses without this. So I now also have this chain here. I'm not sure if I will ever wear that because most of the times I'm wearing my hair open and I can't even stand the fact of thinking about my hair getting tangled in between the pearls. Yeah, maybe I'll find another purpose for this, but I'm pretty sure I will never wear it with the sunglasses. But let me at least show you how it would look like. So this is how the sun is look like with the pearl chain attached to it. You see here they have a little CC logo on both sides and then you have one golden pearl also with a CC logo on there and then you have those black ones. Let me put that on. So I actually do really like how it looks when you wear it. I think it's a little bit long for me. I'm not sure if you can even see it on screen. It's a nice way to carry your sunglasses, but honestly, usually I am putting my sunglasses just on my head if I don't wear them. To put this on, the chain basically disappears. So for me, there's really not much purpose of having this except then having my hair tangled in that, which is absolutely annoying, but some people might like it. So I'm just showing it in case you, you're a fan of that. <laughs> Let me know what you think of this. I think it's really a pity that you can't buy it separately, to be honest. Oh, it's super annoying. I will never wear it like that. I can guarantee that to you. Now it got stuck in my earrings. It gets stuck behind my ears. It's just not a practical design. Let's put it like it is. But of course, if you want to take a picture or something or carry the sunglasses like this, like a necklace, it can be nice. But for me, it's so unnecessary. <laughs> well, that's that. You see my hair is already, I already lost the hair in the chain. Goodbye to you. So as some people might be interested, I think uh, the price of these is 1,100 euros at the moment, which is ridiculously high for sunglasses, if you ask me. Even for Chanel, I think it's too much and you are a little bit crazy if you pay that for a pair of sunglasses, to be honest. I can understand if you don't support this purchase, but let me know what you think, guys. Is it worth it? Would you buy those sunglasses for that price? Do you like the pearl chain? I would love to know your opinion about this. Honestly, I could not be happier because I just really, really love this pair of sunglasses. I will not use a pearl chain. Maybe I'll find another purpose for that, but 
just the sunglasses themselves. They are just perfect for me. And as said, it's not that often that I find a pair of Chanel sunglasses that I like. So I'm still happy with this purchase. Now let's come to a brand of which I've never unboxed anything before. It is Prada. Although I've looked at the crystal bags quite often, I've never ever purchased anything before from Prada. So this is the first time unboxing. I think the only piece that we have at home from Prada is a water bottle that my boyfriend got some time ago. It's this one here. I'm sure you've seen that before. It's very Instagrammable, very nice. My boyfriend uses it for the gym. Let's see what we have here. So first I have here a little pouch where I don't know what is in. Ah, okay. It's some thread. So if there's something that you can fix it. The invoice. And here we have the piece that I got. I've never seen Prada packaging before obviously because I've never bought anything that looks really nice so far and it is some knitwear let me unfold it it is this beautiful warm and cozy knit in grey with the logo on the front knitted. I've been wanting this knit for quite a long time. I've already been thinking about it last season, so last winter, but I was a little bit reluctant and stayed away from it because it is obviously very logo heavy and I just told you before that I'm not a big fan of being like a running advertisement for a brand, so it's a little bit contradictory now, but for some reason I like this. I can't explain you why, but this just caught my eye and it was stuck in my mind since last winter and this winter I finally decided to pull the trigger and make this knit mine. It's actually not too thick so I think you can also still wear this uh, in spring season on the cooler days or in the morning and I just love it. It's so so pretty. This knit is made out of a soft and cozy wool and cashmere mix. It is so comfortable to wear and the quality looks absolutely amazing from what I see so far. I tried it on in three colors, black, beige and this gray one here and had the hardest time to make a decision because I like them all. I mean I think it's not a secret and we all know by now that I'm a sucker for neutrals so I pretty much like every neutral shade from white to cream to beige to gray to black so obviously it was not so easy for me to decide because all of those colors were just perfect in the end i went for that gray one here as i already have quite a lot of black and beige knits in my closet what spoke against the black one is that i often wear black pants so i wanted to have a color that contrasts to that so that the outfit looks a little bit more interesting so I decided against the black one quite fast. Beige is actually my favorite color, but somehow I had the feeling that this particular slightly darker shade of beige made me look a little bit old. I don't know why. I think it was just not the perfect shade of beige for my skin tone. I decided for this beautiful elephant gray, mid gray one. I think it beautifully complements my eye color, which is also like a mixture between blue and gray and it makes them pop a little bit more and I don't have too many gray knits in my closet yet so I think this would be the perfect pick and I also think that you have many combination possibilities so you can of course wear this with a pair of black pants but also combine it with light beige. I think the combination of gray and light beige is so beautiful. And of course also white matches, I mean gray pretty much matches every color so I think this was a safe choice and I am still very happy with that and I think I made the right decision. And again, as in the Hermes store, my boyfriend and the SA were of the exact same opinion. They immediately said that the grey one is the best one. So in the end, I listened to them again and it's turned out to be the right decision. When trying this on in the store, I've actually also had the vision of pairing this knit with my grey Chanel tweed bag. But I'm not sure if the two grey shades match. So. Let's try it out right away. Let me get the bag. This is how it looks like together. I'm not sure to be honest. So the, the knit is definitely a little bit more dark gray than the bag and the bag is a little bit more checked. 
Is this a tweed material? I'm not sure. Does this match? Probably it also looks a little bit different on camera than in real life, but the uh, knit is definitely a little bit darker than the bag. I think it's a little bit too much for my taste to wear it together, but I will style an outfit and then you can tell me if I could wear it and if it looks good or not. So that's that. I really hope that I won't get tired of that big logo too fast, but other than that, I think it's a very, very nice staple piece. It's a statement piece, obviously. Last but not least, we have another Thirsty, so another brand where I never purchased anything from before. I am talking about Tiffany, so we have something uh, which will complement my jewelry collection. And this is also something that was on my wish list. If you watched that video, you definitely know what is inside. Let me not make you wait for too long and open this up. Let me take out what we have in here. So here's the invoice again. Here we have a little jewelry pouch. And here we have the little box. I've actually never considered buying anything from Tiffany before, so this is really my first purchase. The only thing that caught my eye so far is the Tiffany Link Chain series, but I think you can tell by the size of the box that there's nothing in from there. It's very small. So as I said, I did not go for something from the Link Chain series, as I was looking for a very classic piece that I was thinking about very often when putting together an outfit, something that I am definitely missing in my little jewelry collection. So this is the box. Let's open that up. It is a pair of classic pearl earrings such a staple piece i think this is something every girl should have in their jewelry collection it is so so timeless and so pretty i was looking for a classic pair of pearl earrings for a very long time i checked out several brands but ended up at tiffany's obviously so these are the tiffany's signature pearls akoya oyster pearls in 18 karat white gold in the 7 to 7.5 millimeter size i also tried on a little less expensive version i think it was from the ziegfeld collection but the freshwater pearls luster just did not come up to the akoya ones they have such a beautiful shine and shade the creamy white has such an elegant glow if you compare them and look at them next to each other you really see the difference Friends. Unfortunately, I cannot show you as I did not film this. On the pictures on the Tiffany website, this difference does not come out. You really have to see this in person. Let's see how the quality of these will hold up. For now, I am super happy to finally have such a classic pair of pearl earrings at hand. Subtle yet beautiful, exactly what I'm looking for when I'm hunting for the perfect closet essentials. That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Let me know how you liked my picks and which one is your favorite. I've also got a new Chanel bag but I think that this deserves its own dedicated video so stay tuned I promise to share it soon and make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on that one also at this point I would like to say a huge thank you to everybody who's been following along so far our little community has reached a thousand followers and it's something that I still can't believe and have to pinch myself because it's actually not that long ago that I started my channel here. It's so nice to see so many like-minded people gather together here and I really enjoy the exchange with you guys. I hope you equally do so. If you have any wishes for upcoming videos, let me know and also feel free to ask any questions you might have. So once again, thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to leave this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I would be happy to see you soon again on my channel. Bye guys!